The right to information refers to the right of individuals to access data that is held by the government. Usually what I would use is that any information that is funded by the taxpayer's money. The information is not the government's property, it belongs to the public. And it should only be withheld for legitimate reasons, for example, to protect state security or individual privacy. The information is collected using taxpayers' money and whatever decisions that will be made using the data will be applied on us. And the media plays a part of keeping a check and balance towards this government. We can see in the US, in fact, that President Trump had an idea very early on that this virus was dangerous, that this virus could be spread in the air. But this information was not made available immediately to the public and this affected the public's behaviour and the in cases in, in the US. So we often have a saying at Sina Project, if you can't Google it, it doesn't exist for most people. A lot of information produced in a digital format, let's say PDFs, are often disappearing or not archived properly on websites. A useful service that we provide at Sina, for example, is the parliamentary questions and answers. Hundreds of questions and answers every day were basically printed. <laughs> we actually had to scan it, hundreds of pages, digitize it and upload it to the website. We do have an uh, open data portal, data.gov.my, but most of those data sets are actually not very relevant to what the journalists want. Data.gov.my is just one of the many sites in Malaysia that makes it confusing for Malaysians because there's no one-stop place for them to find out everything that they need, not just about the virus itself, but also their daily lives in dealing with the coronavirus. They basically should have done the Kini Labs COVID-19 website. One of my projects was on education. I needed to find enrollment by ethnicity, which is something that the government records anyway. But I was told that the information is considered a secret and it's sensitive. So we're not even talking about one MDB or things that you to expect to be disclosed in a democracy. The harder it is to get information, the harder it is for the public to bribe oversight. Well, to start with, I don't think we have a culture of transparency. Um, we don't have any policy that says that you must publish this data. People just don't feel obliged to answer journalists or to provide that information to the public. Why do they have to go through the trouble of looking for this data, cleaning it up for you, giving it to you in a nice uh, spreadsheet? It's just too much work for you. You'll just say, oh, sorry, we don't have that data or just probably not reply to the email. And there's also this fear that uh, if you provide data to people, they might misconstrue it, which is kind of weird because if you provide more data, it creates more confidence and understanding of the situation, I feel. Sometimes they have the information, but then it's a question of authority. So you might apply for information from one government department and then be told to go to another government department and then that government department might refer you back to the first. Or sometimes there might be interplay between the federal and state. They always tell me that they have to refer to their boss and their boss will refer to their higher bosses. And I suppose the biggest obstacle would be the Official Secrets Act, where any authorised public official can stamp a document solid or confidential, then that document cannot be released to the public, even if information contained in that document does not fall into any of the internationally recognised exceptions. The attendance record of the parliamentarian is one of those things that are not available as a public record. And I think the last time somebody asked for it, it was actually considered a secret. Quite early in my career, I did a series on people migrating overseas. I wanted to get an idea how many people have uh, denounced their citizenship. I was also told that that was an official secret. It's kind of bizarre. Why would it be an official secret? Some governments have responded really well, but others have in fact used it as an excuse to make things less transparent. We have less and less interactions uh, with the government under the pretense of uh, not spreading the pandemic. They say that it's for safety reasons. They want to limit the number of reporters at press conferences. Uh, government officials and ministers uh, freely mingle with the public, uh, but they are not doing the same thing with the media. Why is that? Parliament sitting started today uh, for the session and we're, we're not allowed to cover it. There was limited to I think about 15 news organisations and quite a sizable number of them come from the same uh, group. The health ministry press conference is open to everyone. So if the health ministry can manage it, why is it that other places can't manage this kind of openness? 
It would really help if we had a specific law, for example, a right to information law that says government data is public data. Unless it falls within exceptions, you release it, then it's very straightforward. Without going through the red tapes and the bureaucracy. A Malaysian Media Council would be important to advocate for the right to information, more so in these pandemic times when journalists or from certain news outfits are prevented from attending certain press conferences or even from going into parliament to report on the parliamentary proceedings, which is the heart of any democracy. We need as journalists to be able to write into the government and say, can we have this data or do you have this data? So the Malaysian Media Council would be a good body to to advocate concertedly as a journalist and, and media body to the government for a right to information law and also to conduct a lot of public education and awareness to help the public understand the importance of the right to information. But I think the Media Council should also be a body that can certify independent journalists as well. So we can be more independent and we can keep everyone accountable, both the media and also the government. It's a part of a reform package. If we have a council that speaks with the media who are trying to serve the public, who are trying to do their job, then that will be a more effective way of lobbying for an open government and more transparency in terms of uh, data and information.